It's not often that I'm downright intimidated by the person I'm about to interview. Kristalina Georgieva, ah, easy for lunch. But SRK is a legend, aren't you? You're being very sweet, uh, Richard. Like I told you, I'm not a legend. I'm Bond, James Bond. I told you that at the backstage. Yeah? Say that again, go on. Bond. What's, what's your name? Bond, James Bond. Would you like to play Bond? <laughs> I'd, I'd really wanted to, but I think I'm too short. What about Bond Baddy? Baddy, yes, of course, I'm brown enough. <laughs> if we look at your career, how many years? Now, I think actively including television, uh, 33 years now, I've been actively working as an act actor. But to have reached the level of stardom that you have reached, uh, and for the length of time, is quite an achievement. It's more than that, it's a huge achievement. But it, just, it speaks to more than just, obviously, the raw talent, but it also speaks to perseverance, the ability to keep going, which is something that's so crucial. Um, I, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, you know, perseverance is, uh, I think it happens to some people. Uh, you don't have any option but to persevere. So maybe when I was young, I lost my parents very early and then you realize that, okay, there's no rewinding this, there's no coming back from death and you have to continue, make the most of what you have. So I was kind of a youngish orphan and I had to work my way through it. Or it could be just part of nature, you know, it's the nature of the beast that you uh, are just with dogged determination, you keep on working. Uh, Where does that come from? I don't know, I, I've, I've always tried to analyze it, that, you know, why do I do what I do? Why do I wake up in the morning and just start doing it all over again, even when it's... Uh, um, I, I think it taught me, you know, the work that I do, uh, making films, um, you know, the result happens very suddenly. You think you've made the best of films, you think it's the nicest of stories to tell, you think the world is going to love it, and you wake up on a Friday eve morning and realize it's the biggest flop of your career. And like, which happened. Which happens, yeah, which happens more often than not. Or sometimes you don't like a film and that becomes the biggest hit of your career and you say, like, how did this happen? But what I realized, and I want to say this to everyone actually, and I say this to everyone who's working with me or people who know me, that on Thursday evening, because our films release on Fridays, mostly, or Thursday evenings here in Dubai, so Thursday evening at home in Mumbai, I rinse myself with a two-hour bath and rinse myself of the work that I've done. Because what happens... Oh, hang on. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that bath. It's, it's a ritual, yeah. yeah. Is it a ritual? I mean, yeah. do you put special oils and scents? Do you have bath salts? Do you prepare with candles? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not telling you my secret. You come and take a bath with me. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. I, I show. I'm an actor. I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> Should I take him up on his offer? <laughs> You carry on, sir. <laughs> okay. No, but honestly, I, I do because, you know, I realize when you do a big hit film, it's done well and you're very happy and everybody's jumping around. Friday happens, Saturday happens, Sunday happens. And you realize this is a big blockbuster, but Monday I have to get back to work to make a better film. You made a flop film, Friday you're sad, S Saturday you're crying, Sunday you're moping and you're not waking up from bed. Monday you have to get back to work and start making a better film. So Mondays are for trying to make better films always, so you have to perceive it. Okay, but let me be crude. You don't need the money. No, I need the money. Oh, you do? The bath oils are very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. What's, if you had to define the quintessential SRK film, what would it be? I've said this before, I was telling you uh, behind. I don't know when it happened, Richard, to be honest. I didn't realize it. I never wanted to be someone who's, like I say, uh, peddling love or, or seller of dreams. I wanted to be an action guy with eight packs and beat up people, be in a white uh, vest, girl on my side with a Glock in my hand and uh, speak in baritone and things like that. 
but I never got the opportunity. I don't know. When I started off, suddenly everybody started to think of me as someone who's, uh, uh, you know, promising hope, giving hope, and spreading love, uh, like I spread my arms again and again. So I think my regular film would be a film that gives you hope, gives you goodness, gives you happiness, and at yeah. the end of it all, lots of good songs. Yes, but you've also, if, uh, there's, a, there's a great YouTube video, four minutes of, uh, of your best entrances. Yeah. And there's a lot of action in them. Yeah, only entries, no exits. I just <laughs> keep entering again and again. My kids get very, uh, you know, when I, uh, I have three kids, and uh, whenever that video plays, and I have to tell you a secret, uh, we've compiled it from the office. I think it looks just very cool. It's not made by others. We've made it. So whenever a show like this happens, and if you allow me to show a video here, we'll show you me just entering some places and very dramatically and romantically. But my kids make a lot of fun of it. You know, whenever I get a little serious with them, they'll just look at me and say, oh my God, he's doing those entries from his video. S R K. So it, it does become a... Do you want to give us a... Uh, oh, yeah, I can do that, I can do that. Yeah, just, uh, you want to walk along? With your permission, sir, we'll... Uh, if it's okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on. Go on. <laughs> Is there something you would not do? Mm, I, on screen? On, on screen, I, I don't know, I wouldn't be... Uh, I'd like to give hope in my films. The stories that I tell, I hope they end with hope. I know I've done some really sad films also. I've done films where, which are tragedies. But somewhere down the line, I just hope that I can give hope in films. So I don't like to give hopeless cinema or hopeless stories because I think uh, in life and in businesses and in jobs and world, there's enough uh, sadness. So you, you're extremely well known here, obviously because of the Indian population that is here and elsewhere. But you like it here. You have you have a home. You you are you are not a here today, gone tomorrow person for Dubai. No, 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 no. I spend a lot of time here. I have a beautiful house which has been given to me by Nakhil, and uh, it's one of the nicest places in the world because nobody troubles me. And His Excellency, the Prime Minister, also just told me that he stays next to it. Um, so the next New Year party is with him. Uh, he's a good neighbour. But it's, it's really nice. I really, really enjoy being in Dubai. I really love being here. And you find the juxtaposition with going back to, to, to Mumbai? No, this is very easy. It's just two and a half hours away. Right. So I keep dropping in. Um, we, we come with the kids. And there's so much to do here. I'm sounding like the uh, uh, tourist ambassador of Dubai suddenly, right? <laughs> Everybody asks about crossover. And I'm no different. Um, because the more I researched you, the more I wondered. I mean, all right. Supposedly, 2011 DiCaprio never happened. Supposedly, allegedly, Slumdog Millionaire you turned down, allegedly. Why hasn't the crossover taken place? I don't see why it should. You're a big enough name in your own uh, genre. But why has crossover not taken place? I've said this honestly, but nobody believes it. So I'm going to say it to you very, very honestly. Nobody's ever offered me any work, uh, crossover, of uh, substance. I may have had conversations with people. I know lots of lovely people from the West, from the English film industry, from the American film industry. But nobody's offered me uh, any good work. You know, I hear actors talk about, oh, yes, I want to cross over. I want to take Indian cinema. I think I'm, uh, I still have to learn how to be able to deliver to the audience that likes me. And, you know, instead of spreading myself too thin. And then, yeah, of course, if you've not been offered a job, how do you take it? So really, I've never been offered a film in uh, Hollywood or in uh, England. Uh, yes, Slumdog was there. Um, now that you mention it, and uh, I spend a lot of time with Mr. Boyle. He's very sweet. Uh, but I was doing uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire on television. Successfully. Successfully at that time. And I just felt uh, in the story that was being told, the guy who was hosting was very mean. Uh, in the story that was being told. And I'm like, you know, I'm here doing uh, Slumdog Millionaire. And the guys who were producing the show wanted me to do the film. I just found it, you know, this guy's... Uh, I was cheating and being dishonest as the host. So I just found that it's very strange that I'm being a host and I'm cheating in the film. So I explained to Mr. Boyle that I wouldn't like to do it, please. And they're way better actors than me. And I think Mr. Anil Kapoor did it and he was fantastic as the host. 
when the person's getting close to a million, well, the, the, the top in uh, who wants to be a millionaire, that moment, what do you feel? Genuinely, when I was hosting it, I would uh, hope they win it. I really, really but hope did, they win but it. But I've done a quiz show myself, and there comes a point when you think, how close can I get to getting them to win it without... Yeah. Did you know what I mean? I, I always did that, you know, when I was... Uh, because there's so many people from different parts of the country and I really want them to win. And you, yes, you do try to be a little helpful. And, but you can't. But you can't. You can't because the producer keeps shouting in your ears, don't. You've said enough. You can't talk about it. And unfortunately, the last four questions or the last two questions are extremely difficult. You know, suddenly they're thrown upon you and you're like, oh my God, this person is not going to get the answer. And I feel really bad. And I try to think, I wish I had some hint and I can't mislead the person by trying to give that hint because I also mostly didn't know the answer. <laughs> so in what is left that you have not done that you would like to do? And, and by that, I, 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 that's not a Hollywood question. That is a, a, a general, you know, even within your own, within Indian films, within production, within what, what, what still remains on your list? So Richard, when I started off, I just wanted to survive. Uh, you know, be able to get a week's work or a month's work or a year's work and say, okay, my films should do well. But as years have gone past, I think um, uh, this whole, uh, my whole job has become more and more motivated towards bringing a new one, technology into Indian film industry. Uh, I want to end my career, which is far from ending right now. I have another good 35 years to go. I really, really want to make that film which is uh, loved by the whole world and then nobody on a big stage like this asks me, why haven't you crossed over? That film should cross me over. That's my dream. I, I'd, I'd want you to learn Hindi and Urdu and Arabic to be able to understand that film. Did you, f did you go on a massive retreat of personal introspection between 2018 and 2023? You just had two or three films that were not as successful. Suddenly he disappears and everybody thinks, Oh, he's licking his wounds, he's feeling sorry for himself, he's, he, what a, and then he comes back in 23 with three blockbusters. What was going on in that interim period? So you're very kind, yes, I had uh, uh, massive flops, and they did very, very badly, and I was doing all of that, I was licking my wounds. <laughs> I was uh, not in, uh, you know what I did? Yeah. For four years? Go on. I've never said this to anyone, though I've mentioned it, but today, here, I'll tell everyone. I learned how to make the best pizza in the world. That's what I did. Honest to God, I stopped listening to stories. I stopped wanting to tell stories. I found myself and made myself a small kitchen, and I started learning how to make pizzas. And I learned what you asked me right to begin with, perseverance, because to get the perfect pizza, it takes millions of square pizzas before you're able to make it completely round. So I learned perseverance and I will make the best, best pizza in the world. Can you? No. <laughs> I'm working on it next four years when you don't see me. <laughs> but time. was it a difficult moment when your wife and your family and everybody said, will you stop making pizza? Go back to work. Was it difficult to know now is the time to go back? Yeah, actually, you know, there was always a toss up. Um, I was very glad my family didn't tell me, listen, your pizzas are better than your films. Stop making films. <laughs> so, so I was glad they turned around and said, no, as good as your pizza is, I think your films are better. They were very encouraging, especially my children, my team. Uh, some of them are sitting here and they said, OK, what you're going to do is uh, tell stories. And you know, I had become indulgent. I'd started becoming too innovative. I was looking for perfection. And I started failing. I needed to look for excellence. I needed to be unique, but I needed to look at the audience, what they want. And I'd stopped hearing the crowds. I used to go where there are thousands and lakhs of people waving at me, but I wouldn't hear or feel what they wanted to see of me. 
you know, I was going there and waving and I'm saying, whatever I make, I'll be innovative. So I did a film about a vertically challenged guy. I did a film about a manic psychopathic fan. And I'm like, no, people just like to see me giving hope and happiness and love. So let's get back to that. And as a result, the movies that you came back to make, and there were three of them last year, were huge successes. Therefore, that introspection clearly worked. That clearly did the trick. Yes, mashallah, I think, uh, um, I think it just helped me uh, realize that whatever you do, you have to do for the people or your consumers or your audiences. And yeah, it also made me realize uh, one very main thing, that don't forget to pray. You have to pray and you have to get back to work. Sir, I'm going to leave you with one. I'm sorry, I've forgotten. What was your name again? Your name is Bond? Bond. James Bond. He's available for the, the <laughs> offers. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, everyone, for the office. <laughs>